Okay, so um, right now I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put, just lay in um, the color for here. It, I'm comparing it. It has more pink in it and not quite as bright and yellow as that. Hey, it's Eric Rhodes of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. We are live. Uh, I'm going to wait before we get into too much detail for some people to get on board. As, as you know, when you're live, it takes people some time to get notifications, and we're live on multiple platforms. Uh, we have Sherry Christensen as our guest today. Say hi, Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry Christensen, and the barking you hear is my little dog, Zoe. So she may mm -hmm. be... Um, partaking in this. Well, is there any way you can grab her and bring her over and let us, let us see her? Or see you want to see her for a sec? Okay, she might yeah. stand up. We want to see her. We don't mind if she's in the yeah. shot. You want to be in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ready? One. Well, this should be interesting. This is a brand new puppy. Oh, my goodness. This is not a little puppy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Zoe, look. Look, Zoe. Hi. There you go. Oh. And what's, what's, is it a he or she? She, it's Zoe, a girl. Zoe. Zoe, and and what, Zoe is her name, okay. And how old is Zoe? <laughs> Zoe is about 13 weeks and about 36 yeah. pounds. Wow. And your last, when you, uh, when, when I last saw you, you came over to the house, you had, you were having some problems with, with your dog at the time and you had for how many years? Um, 10 years, seven months, almost. Wow. Very and so did you jump right in and get a puppy right away? Um, not right away, but it was really hard. I hadn't been without a dog for over 25 years. So um, so we just became available and we hopped in the car and went and got her. Oh, she's beautiful. She's what a sweet. beautiful dog. All right. So uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Sherry. I'm going to drop off to a couple announcements and then we're going to bring you back. And, uh, and, and then we're going to talk about uh, some concepts in, in painting that I think will be really valuable for folks. So uh, tell us where you are. Um, well, I'm here in San Antonio, Texas. And um, I know you're usually in Texas, but not now. So we're at different ends. Um, and um, I'm in my studio. So uh, my studio actually was the master bedroom of this house. When we sell this house, we loved it. It has a beautiful pool, backs up to a canyon. Um, but there was no studio and I have students all the time going, well, um, you know, how do I paint? I don't have the perfect studio. I don't have the space. Well, you can make the space. Um, we had no need for this big of a master bedroom. So, um, and it's only, um, room upstairs. So I have the whole upstairs and made it into a studio. So I love that. Oh, that's outstanding. That's nice. Well, that's creative. And, and that shows where your priorities are. Yeah, it does. <laughs> So how would you describe uh, what it is you do uh, as an artist? Well, as an artist, um, I paint color and light. Um, I usually paint farm animals because I grew up in the country and that's what was near and dear to me. But I also sometimes paint street scenes or restaurant scenes, but it's always color and light and it's always shapes of light and shadow. I don't really think objects when I'm painting. I just think of, you know, I see light that really moves me and the shapes of light and shadow, and, and that's what motivates me, that plus color. Well, you know, you and I got to know each other recently because you came to Austin uh, where we have our soundstage and you did a video, I'm gonna show it. You did a video called The Color of White, Making Your Whites Come to Life. And I, I just wanted to show the the imagery uh, of the of the ducks, and uh, it was really interesting because we filmed you in the process. I, I wish I had that picture of you down on your knees taking pictures of ducks, uh, but we we filmed you taking these pictures of the ducks, and you're using photo reference because you couldn't get them to stand still. But if you look at these ducks, so this is what I found fascinating about this video. If you look at these ducks. Uh, and, and you were to hold up a white card in the scene, there is no any, there's nothing on there that is pure white. And of course, in a photograph, it tends to blow it out a little bit uh, anyway. But 
And, and, and the one thing that I think we all get a little confused about is painting the color of white. And I know you've got a whole video about it, but I thought maybe that'd be a good thing to start with is to talk about how do you paint whites? What, what, do you, what should you be thinking about? Well, color is relative. So you have to be thinking about the time of day, whether you're painting outside plain air or if you're using um, a photo, remember the time of the day you took the photo. Um, obviously, I like a lot extreme backlighting. Uh, I like sunny days. Some people like more of a moody kind of atmosphere. So I like a warm light. So if I'm painting something that has white in it, um, I mean, I'm not just gonna automatically put a color on there. Everything that's in that situation is relative to each other. Um, how warm or cool it is, what value it is, how intense or how um, grayed out a color is. So I'm comparing everything as I'm doing it. Um, but if it's a warm day, like with the ducks, and also I have a rooster here. Let's see if we can see it. Um, a little bit of glare, let's see. Yeah, let, let me I'm go to full, full screen like for you. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can see this is a white rooster. I'm with some black on him. And there's a lot of color in there. And there's, I don't think there's one spot that straight white paint. So I didn't just make up those colors. I chose those colors um, by comparing, you know, which is warmer, which is cooler. Um, and then the values. Most of this is all in shadow with just a little bit of light on it. Um, so it was a fairly dark, you know, end of the evening kind of thing. So you can't paint something at that time of night the same color, you know, there's no formula that you would do early in the morning or um, <coughs> afternoon light, light hitting straight down. Sorry, that's Zoe, my puppy. Uh, but uh, just a second, I'm gonna throw her a bone. He's over. Throw her a bone. Oh, so you're prepared. You got, you're gonna need a lot of those today. <laughs> yeah, I might need a few. The husband if you're just tuning in and you didn't see earlier that you'll have to look at the replay to, to meet <laughs> uh to meet the puppy so uh anyway you were saying yeah so um what you do when you're painting the light and if we have time i have um this blocked in all these are all shadow colors even though this is looking um light right now but when i put the lights on it which is the white in light with warm light on it um you'll see how all of this falls into shadow yeah um, well, well we'll we'll make some time for that i think okay. that that would be a, a a really great fun thing to do today you know one thing i realized when we were talking um we were talking about whistler had a painting uh and it was it was called the woman in white or yes. something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, I wish I, I should, probably should yeah. pull it up. But it, but when you look at that painting, you realize that it's really not white. It reads as white, but the painting isn't really white. And that the thing that I was when I was uh, you know totally learning to paint, if I would paint something white, I would just paint everything white. I, and I might you know I might put a little form in it, but or a little gray in it, or a little you know, a little blue in it, but I didn't really understand how to see all the colors that were happening that were bouncing off of all the uh, the things around me. So it made a made a huge difference. So uh, anyway, I, I think that would be, uh, it, I, I think learning white is going to be pretty cool. I, I think you're texting your husband and saying, get this oh, yeah. out of here. <laughs> Come get the girl. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Well, she's, She's sweet, and she probably wants another one of those things that you just yeah, gave her. I, I think it, it's the attention. She sees me getting attention somewhere else, and she's like, wait uh, a second. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's okay. So anyway, uh, I'll just, for a second, uh, you've got a video out called The Color of White. It's at Lilladol, lilyartvideo.com. And so that's that's something worth doing. I'll give Sherry a chance to, uh, to uh, kind of flit off and, and take care of the puppy. Uh, which is an adorable puppy, which probably eats 30 or 40 pounds of food a day, I would imagine. Uh, Joy and Manji also has uh, uh, Bernese Mountain Dogs, and so they're they're fabulous. My little dogs are uh, would be about the size of the bone that you you gave them. So anyway, so I um, 
uh, want to remind you guys while we're just waiting for Sherry that uh, you can learn more about her at lilyartvideo.com or that's where her videos are. She's going to do a little bit of a demonstration today and talk a little bit about, uh, about um, I'm not sure what you're going to talk about. <laughs> are you there? I'm you're here. I'm here. You're back. Just, All just right. Getting uh, the dog um, back to her crate. Um, so what I'm going to talk about um, as soon as he comes and gets Zoe is I'm just going to come in here. What I want to show you is actually um, the color of white going on and how even though this is a light colored chip. Um, so one thing you're going to need to do is whenever you turn away from your your uh, screen. Uh, we lose your audio, so you're going to have to kind of turn around and talk to us when you when you okay. talk. Okay, good. All right. And, and I don't have any way I can zoom in the camera, so everybody's going to have to bear with us with, with the technology limitations that we have. Do you want to, uh, while we're waiting for that to take place, you want to talk about the um, the value study at the top, or is that part of yeah. what you're going to do? Yeah, sure. Oh, here, he's come to save the day. Hey. <laughs> Uh, the value is steady at the top. I did that for the color of white. And um, I, I really like doing value studies because especially if you're dealing with white, you have a tendency when you're in the shadows to get it too light because it's a white object. Can you pull that off there and, and bring it up to the screen? All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you full screen now. Okay, okay. good, good. That's better. Yeah. Like that. All right, yes. so you were tell us what you were saying. Okay, so when you're looking at this, even though we have white ducks, you can definitely see um, the shadow versus <laughs> and back with shadow versus the light here. Um, and what students have a problem with is they make they go it's white, so they make it white or maybe white with a little black in it in the shadows i mean obviously this is a value study so yeah it has black in it but they don't make this dark enough to read a shadow so even though it's a light object it still needs to fall in the whole overall um shadow what is the concept about the lightest light and the darkest light in a shadow remember that yes. so if i was looking at this one um and i have to look at this or i'll do it backwards so really you've got your darkest dark um, is the back part other than the dark accents down here. Um, your second one is, is in here. Um, third kind of, there, there are some shadows kind of coming back in there. Um, the lightest shadow um, are the ducks, the, the shadows on the ducks. But that lightest shadow is still um, darker than um, the darkest light. Um, right. It's a hard concept to say, but if you look at the lights um, on this one, we have a little bit of light coming in um, that was water in the background. So that would be kind of your, your darkest light. Then we have this one um, on the ground, which would be your next one. And then um, really- So that's your darkest ducks, light, yeah. Yeah, the light on the ducks um, are your lightest lights and actually right. the lightest part of the painting so well, what do we say we oh go ahead oh I, I was just gonna say the most important part is to just keep your lights lighter than your darks you know so everything that's in shadow I, and people get confused because they think well this color is a dark color and that color is a light color um but there are lights and darks of every color so um, on black and white, it simplifies it for you because you don't have to think of color at the same time, but you want all your lights lighter than all your shadows. That makes okay. Sense. Yeah, makes sense. I'm sure that people will be completely confused in the comments. <laughs> and here, here's another example, if I can get it not glaring. Well, why don't you first off show it up close, really, really close. So you face the camera this is and, and, okay. and. <laughs> Okay, yeah, now we should be able to hear you. Okay, so if you can see this, um, the duck on, everything's backwards, sorry, on this side. I know, it's weird, it's weird yeah, everything's I got backwards. Yeah, I'm being on camera. So the duck on this side, can you see the light on it? It's really the lightest light on here. Um, 
And then the second light's going to be the light on the ground. Um, also, this side's, oops, I go off there. It's there. Um, and then if you go to the shadows, um, the deck with over here. I know. It, be, it's very, it, imagine being a weather weather person on TV and trying to do I don't know how they do it. it. They, must, they must do everything backwards their whole life. They, they, so they, anyway, they, that's. That's your light of shadow. The other duck, duck, see, got me all mixed up now. The other chick, these are chicks, you guys. <laughs> Told you it'd be fun. Uh, the other chick here is the second um, lightest. Uh, the ground in shadow is the um, third. And then this, the background here is the fourth, other than, you know, dark accents underneath her feet. So when you want to paint chicks, what do you do? You go to a farm or do you go over to tractor supply and buy a couple? That's what I did. I mean, I, that's why I had chickens because I kept buying yeah. chicks. Yeah, because they're because they're uh, they're like a dollar a piece at Tractor Supply. Yeah, they they are. I've actually even gone in places and asked to borrow them, and it just depends on the place of whether they let me do that or not. Um, I mean, I and I'm happy to buy something from them, but right now I live in the city, so I, I don't want chicks. But when well, the problem the problem is if you keep them, you got to raise them. Exactly. And you got to take care of them and everything. And I did that for years, but I was on 10 acres, so it was a little bit different. Um, also, getting to know people that um, are out in farm country. And um, I recently um, had friends that brought over little ducklings to me so I could photograph them. So it, it helps having connections um, with animals. Uh, especially if you want baby animals like ducklings or, or chicks, right. because it's hard. I, I like to use all of my own photos, and you know you need to be someplace you can be laying down on the ground while you're shooting those. Yeah. Well, listen. Let's uh, let's go into your little demo, and and I understand that it's going to be. I'll just apologize to everybody because she's going to. We're not able to zoom in on it. And uh, I don't know, maybe you can zoom your iPad in. Do you think you can zoom it in? Um, I would have to move it forward. I could try. Well, I mean, you can't you just do the little um, zoom, well, do zoom it on this? thing? I don't know. So, uh, you got me frozen now. I don't think that worked. Well, maybe because maybe because of the program we're in. Anyway, yeah. uh, we'll just do it. And just remember that you're going to have to kind of turn towards us to tell us what, what you're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to say before I do it right now, and I'm only going to do it a little bit. The whole idea is to keep in the big shapes. That's what I want everyone to get the idea of. It's not about all the little details. You, you paint the dog before the fleas, and so you want the foundation there first, and you want to put your big shapes down. And the reason for that is so you can make adjustments. If put that in the comments, to, everybody. Paint the dog before the flea. Yes, exactly. So um, it's a good way to remember it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and um, everything that's on here right now is shadows. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on a little bit of light so you can see how you get that punch of color All right. um, with the color of white. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, here goes. All right. So we're going to work on this little tiny chick painting. And um, I'll try to do a little play-by-play -play without being too obnoxious. But um, oh, good. No, I appreciate it. I have to switch glasses here. It's, it's kind of hard to to uh, to look that direction and paint and talk looking at the iPad. So, all right. So tell us what you're doing. Okay. So um, right now I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put just lay in um, the color for here. It I'm comparing it. It has more pink in it and not quite as bright and yellow as that. Okay, now somebody in the comments said, what What do you use as your white? Do you have a one white or do you use multiple whites? Um, I have one white. I use um, quick dry white. I used to use titanium white, but I paint really thickly. Um, if we have time later, I'll show that up close. You can see how thick my paint is. Okay. If I use quick dry, it, it doesn't dry fast enough. Yeah, okay. So you're put, putting it on pretty thick. All right. Wow. See, that's to me, that takes courage because it's like really makes that light stand out. Yeah. And it's just, I, I got it. Now, 
know, I'm adjusting it. I don't call these mistakes because students are so worried to put something on the canvas. You have to put it on so you can make an adjustment. Yeah, there's pink in it, but it's not quite that pink. So I'm going to come in and I put more blue. Now I'm going to just adjust Yeah, it looks it like down. you cooled it down a little. Yeah, and then I warmed it up with a little yellow ochre. So the whole concept here is painting big shapes because then you can make adjustments easier when you can see those big shapes. So what's the reason for the underpainting? If you're going to paint over it anyway, it's not you're not letting it show through. Why, uh, why even have it? A, a little bit of it does show through, especially in my darks. Um, okay. If I didn't have that, it would my darks would be too heavy. Um, All right. On the lights, yeah. Usually on the lights, you don't. Um, you make that, that you make that look so easy. It is easier. <laughs> All right. And obviously here I'm not doing anything um you know with edges or anything like that yet because I just want to get this concept. You know, it takes a lot of courage to paint on live when uh, you know, in a, when we're shooting video, we're typically not live and you can, if you mess up, you can, we get it on video and we, but we can edit it out. So you have a lot of courage, Sherry. Okay. You got me scared now. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't you. mess it up now. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So you can see big shape there. Now I'm just going to come in hopefully with a clean brush. Let me get a clean one. Okay. And I'm going Getting a bigger brush. Um, I, I just want a real clean brush because I'm going to do this really light part. And if I don't have a really clean brush, um, it'll pick up color from the brush and um, and muddy it. And I don't like muddy color. No. Okay, this is the fun part, you guys. Wow. See, I that I don't know if I'd have that kind of courage. <laughs> Usually at this point, if I'm doing a demo for students, I get a whoa, you know, it's it it scares them at first, but um, it's best to put it down boldly um, because nobody ever starts with muddy color and brightens it up. Um, almost everybody I know ends up um, muddying up their colors. So if I start bright and I need to tone it down, I can. Um, but actually on this, I probably, I wouldn't, I will do a transition, you know, not, not in this video, but later on between the two, but not a lot. So we were talking, uh, on yesterday, we were talking about transition colors. Uh, Lynn Boyer was on and she was talking about the, the color between the light and the shadow is, is typically pretty high chroma. Is that something you find too? Um, I go by the pink, what I see, um, and yes, um, it usually is, but not always. So um, I will, um, I will try it. Like in here, I already have, you know, it's pretty warm there. I could do a transition. You know, it, it, it helps get rid of that hard line, and yet you still have fairly high color. Nice, on yeah. Uh-huh. But when That's I scary. just on here, like it's really warm here, and it, it has a cooler part here before it goes to it. So I wouldn't just put warm air because I think, oh, I need high chroma. I, I'm going to do what is actually there, and I love the play of warm, cool. So I try not to think of rules, but just paint, paint what I see. See, I think it's fun when you're being that bold. It is fun. I, this is you the know, part I, of the demo. That's why I saved this for you. I glanced to the back of the room to some of my landscapes where I feel like my light is flat and thought, well, I think I need to just try that. See if I can just go crazy bold and see what happens. Well, it just depends on the time of day too because you don't want to put it on a landscape that's from like a cloudy rainy day or it's, it's not going to read right 
No, right. No, it's not a gray day kind of thing. Uh, yeah, as you come around here, you can see that it gets cooler. So I'm adding a little. I brightness. can't really see your reference photo because your uh, head's in the way. See it? Okay, now we can see it. Yeah, it's a little cooler. Now, you, can you speak to the idea of photos? Because, you know, we're not seeing that level of chroma in that photo whatsoever. Can And, and can you talk to a lot of people paint from photos and, and they're going to paint what they see there? Right. Okay. So um, everything's relative. Um, sorry, I've got to switch my glasses because they're my painting glasses. Um, everything's relative. So I'm comparing, I'm not trying to copy, I'm not holding my brush up to the paint or painting or a photo and trying to match it. I'm looking at, is this warmer or cooler than that? Um, is this value lighter or darker than that? So right. I'm making relative um, decisions there between local color, um, how warm or cool it is, how intense or grayed out it is, and what the value is. Okay. So um, by doing that, um, it's those relative colors that give you that power. Um, with the color and that's why you kind of have to have the right color in the right spot and you will have it if you have the right value if you would have the right local color uh, and when I say local color I mean just what the what the object looks like without any different lighting on it um, right people you know think of apples red grass is green all that but most painters know that's not usually true because of whatever color of light is on that but for beginners, it's like, okay, so this was a little white chick. Okay, but let's look at it. Um, okay, we know this is in shadow because we've already decided that, you know, and if we can't decide that, we should do a black and white. So we do understand that concept, right. even though okay. it's a lot of shadow. Um, I can see how warm that is there, and I can see that it gets cooler and a little more blue. There. We're having trouble hearing you when you're walking and when you're facing away. But so oh, when when you uh, this this uh, shadowed chick that you you had that you just started the laying color on, is that wet or dry? Are you laying it on a dry surface or a wet surface? Would it matter? It, it's wet. I just did this like a half hour before I got on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted I. I have a show at McClary Fine Art right now, so all my paintings are out other than uh, this one that's going inside. And I thought it's easier to understand the concept looking at something like this than a finished painting. Absolutely. Uh, and since I didn't have one that was in the works, I thought, well, I'll just quickly, um, you know, block in um, one for you so you can, you know, get the concept of it. Outstanding. Good. I love it. Thank you. Sure, you get, sure. Are you going to do any more on that, or are you pretty much um, done? I can. What, do we have time? You got a, you've got a, a, a little tiny bit. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do a little bit more so I can have fun. Uh, this is fun. Okay. Any day. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you need to get a slightly smaller brush. The tension is building. I think what we ought to do is everybody watching should pr try to predict what she's going to do next. <laughs> uh, and, and what you would do. Um, I'm looking at this now and trying to figure out what I would do next. I'm seeing a lot of chroma in those legs underneath that chick. That chick. Like in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now see how I just kind of have walked in form there. And by doing the lights, 
it's kind of making the foot. Yeah, I wish we could zoom in. I know, be, I know. Be nice. Maybe at the end I can lift well, it up. If we had if we had our master photographer Scott, he would he'd be all over it. You know, trying to set this up, I have to say, I was really missing Scott. <laughs> it's hard to get lighting that you can paint in and be on camera in at the same time. Yeah, we're very fortunate. Uh, for those who don't know, we have a uh, Hollywood level video crew that does our videos. We wanted to make sure that they were spectacular. The guy that we hired as our chief videographer um, came off of just came off of doing a, a a lot of national network television shows, one Hollywood movie recently, and um, and so you know he's really a stickler about quality and detail, which Sherry learned when she went into the studio with him, and then. Uh, then the rest of the crew, you know, uh, Bryant has done many, many Hollywood movies and produced them and, and worked on the sets and, and so on. And Trevor has done a lot of animated films. So between the three of them, they've got quite a bit of experience. Ah, now that just that beat comes alive. Yeah, and I just needed now. See, that's a reflected light. I know it's way back there but so it needed to lighten up it's reflecting off there but it can't be as light as these lights because reflective lights stay in the shadow right so, so is that uh, one one of the things i'm curious about and, and we kind of talked about this yesterday with lynn boyer too and that is that um there's a temptation to blend where you have the light meeting the um the dark is are, are you going to pretty much leave it like that? Are you going to soften those edges on the inside? What what would you be doing? Um, I would, I'll just do a little bit, because that's all I would do, is do a little bit. Um, usually, if I was in a better situation here, I would probably have one um, of my shadow brushes and one of the lights. And so you have shadow brushes and light brushes, meaning you, you don't want to pollute uh anything with light that has any any shadow color in it yeah because the lights like right now i'm not sure what i did with my light brush and um i think it's over here no not it i'll grab another one um the problem is with that really light paint if i switch from a blue even if i wiped it really good it still pick up some of that blue um onto the yellow and then we go my gray color so how, how do you control, how do you know which are your shadow brushes and your light brushes? Do you have a system? Uh, no. I mean, each time it can be a different one. But just that day, what I pick up for one that's in the light, um, I don't want to, and, and I've done it before, where I dip it into the blue and then I go, oh, dang, now I'm really going to wash it. Well, that's, that's because we all get lazy and it's just easier to do it that way. Yeah, but if you, if you can kind of think and just keep it in the other hand when you're not using it, um, it can really, really help um, save a lot of clean. So see how that's just transitioning there a little bit? Right. The edges a little softer. Um, now it's a little warmer. Well, it just really, really made it come alive. Yeah, and, you know, the purpose here wasn't to, you know, finish the painting because I know um, we don't, I don't have that great, I don't have spot here <laughs> for lighting, yeah. but I wanted you to see how just keeping things simple, um, the students like to make things too hard, and if you get those basic shapes done, you don't have to do a lot more. Um, I could, you know, keep working on it, but it doesn't, I mean, it needs more, but not, not a lot. You don't have to do a lot between the edges. So it looks like you're kind of creating a sense of a glow on top of the, it, it's like a lighter glow on top of the glow. Yeah. And sometimes I'll do that where I might have it slightly darker underneath and then, um, Come in where I really want it to pop, and usually that's around the head if, if that's what the subject calls for. Um, I just want to get this transition here. And then 
if I was working, it, it's really hard as an artist not to, not to keep going, try to finish a painting. Yeah. Um, I'd love to show you edges and getting rid of things. I mean, I can do um, just a little bit here. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a restricted time. Yeah, but did you see what I did with the edge there? Just in any spot I can, I like to get it so I can have a lost edge. And it's usually in shadow into shadow. That's really close in value. Lost edges, shadow into shadow. Somebody will put that in the comments, yeah. I'm sure. Okay, so... It's so you're softening softening that up a little bit, that transition there. Yeah, especially because it's a little wing. Um, it does get, it's cool, but lighter up there. So to make a little more form on that, it needs to be lighter. But it still has to stay in the shadow values. It's amazing to me how that, just that one little... One little spot really helped uh, change the sense of anatomy. Yeah, it should give it more form. Doesn't take much. I don't know if people watching on their phone can zoom in with their fingers on this or not. That's cool. And you know, at the end here, I'll um, either bring it towards the camera or try to figure out how to bring my camera towards it. Well, I'm just appreciative that you would do this for us today. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun. I was hoping you'd go for it. Absolutely. Let's see. And then it gets a little warmer. See over here, it's warmer on your knee. Right. Well, this isn't something everybody gets to see every day to watch the world famous Sherry Christensen do an animal live on uh, social media. That's pretty cool. See, that came out too light. Can you see it jumping? Yeah, yeah, it pops out too much. So. What'd you do? Just lay a little dark over it? Yeah. And sometimes, because I don't like to over mix my paint, I like broken color. Yeah. And by broken color, I mean um, paint that's not, you know, you mix the paint a little bit, you're mixing two colors together or maybe three, then picking it up, putting it on, just leaving it. Um, and, you know, if I'm mixing, say, I was doing halo blue, a little yellow ochre, and cadre light. Um, I'm not going to totally mix them up. I want the individual colors still showing a little bit because yeah. that way to the viewer, right. they mix it in their head. Yeah. It, it makes it more interesting to me anyway. Well, this is fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, stop here soon, but I just want to... It's, it's kind of ironic you have this, this giant... Hundred thousand dollar easel behind you, and you're painting a six by eight. I know, painting. I know. Well, it, it'd be a longer video if I was on this. Yeah. Now, how big? <laughs> how big do you paint typically? Um, I think the biggest was probably like sixty by seventy, something like that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Pretty big. And this this will extend um, out. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, we've just got a couple minutes left, Sherry, and so we're just going to let you do a couple more things, and then we're going to head out uh, and wrap up the day. Sure. Why don't I um, just take this out and put it up close? As you oh, well, that's a great idea. Yeah, so we can really get a get a sense yeah. for it. Yeah, obviously it's not a finished painting, but really this is what I wanted people to see were um, the big shapes if I angle it. Oh, yeah, that's – yeah, lean it forward a little. Now that you have it on a dark background, did you? Oh, it looks like a piece of masonite. Did you do that intentionally so you're not staring at white? So you can yes, stare? yes, because I paint with a lot of darker values. I don't like staring at white. Yeah, and um, I like the Venetian red gesso underneath because it brings the warmth through. Um, it just 
Yeah, if I, I had stark white, it would be too much. And if you look at my palette, it's also, um, can you see it there? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, this is a good time. Grab your iPad and okay. we'll do, we'll show your palette and then we show us your studio and then we'll say sayonara. Okay, great. Now I'm going to be walking around backwards, so just... Okay, try to keep your, uh, your voice close to the microphone. Okay, so... Okay, one thing I noticed that I think is an important studio tip is that you have a covered uh, trash next to your easel. If, you're, yes. if it's not covered, you can have spontaneous combustion and uh, wake up in the middle of the night with your studio burning down. It's happened to many people. Oh, really? I did not know that. But I, since I have a puppy <laughs> um, and I've always had dogs, I, I have to have a covered trash can. I just can't take a risk. Right. Now, um, things are a little weird here because I have lights, but I'll try to go behind the lights. Um, I just, oh, it's a, I don't know if you can really see here. Uh, I have a little couch that I can lay back on. And look at this. I have... A puppy pin. Wow, that's a, that's a big pin. <laughs> that's so my girl can be here while I'm in the studio. Right. And uh, I have a mess, but you know what? It's a studio, and it's supposed to be a mess. I'll try to walk forward. Again, it's I'm not really... To, it's supposed to be a mess. We like messes. Yeah, exactly. So between studio stuff and puppy treats, you will see underneath all this stuff um, a lot of gambling paint. Um Let's see. What is it showing now? I'm trying to do the backwards thing here. Um, you can I think see. you need. Some, I think you need some more brushes. Oh yeah, probably, huh? You know, I hardly ever um, throw my brushes away because each one of them gets a little different kind of tip on it. Oh yeah. And every once in a while, if you want a different kind of mark, it's it's fun to have. So um, yeah, I do like brushes. They're yeah. like magic. You know? Oh, they are. And then um, behind the brushes, you can see my my computer there. So right. that's kind of the office area. And then behind that, I don't know if you can see it because I had to cut the light. Can you see the books? I've got yeah. art books and stuff nice. there. Yeah. And then more art books downstairs. But of course. Um, drawing racks over here. I know this is, I'm just not used to this backwards thing. Um, but, and I have lights in the corner that so I can photograph my paintings. Um, let's see if I go this way. I'll You're making good on. use good use of that space. Yeah, it's not a big space. I'll come back so you guys don't get dizzy. Um, but it's it's workable and I switch it. Oops, what happened to you? Well, we lost your, your screen. I don't know. Uh, just a second. I we can hear you. We here. just can't. Okay, there we back. are. <laughs> So, right. um, I shoot all my own um, photos of my paintings. So, I just move, like I've got the master bath over there. So, I just move stuff out, put my lights up, use this easel. Um, and I have photography lights um, so I can shoot my own work because I found a long time ago that it's just too hard to. Um, one, pay somebody to shoot all my artwork and to get it to them on time and then get it to the, the galleries. Yeah, well, you know, learning that properly is very important. There's a guy in San Antonio there that used to work over at Greenhouse Gallery who, is, who really knows how to do it and, and taught it. And, um, you know, that's really critical. I was uh, making comments to our editors today about some things that I found that needed to be a little sharper. You know, the, the, the photograph wasn't quite sharp enough. You know, we got to get them on tripods and make sure that they're well lit and, and lots of variations and have uh, color cards and grayscales on them. So I'm just looking out the window. I, Sherry, I'm going to give you a little treat here. Give you a little treat of the, the scene this, this uh, today. Oh, beautiful. Oh, there, that's I'll, wonderful. Here, there we go. Excellent. So th that little, uh, there's a little little boat down there that I, I paint from. Uh, that little metal boat down on the far end, that's that's my painting boat. And the oh. other boat belongs to my kids. And then that that uh, old boat in the middle is called a guide boat. It's 150 years old. I love that wood boat. And that's beautiful. Make a good painting. Anyway, it's a, a beautiful day. And uh, so... All right. Well, this has been really a, a terrific treat, Sherry, to have you. Do you have any final thoughts or final tips for day number 140? Um, 
have fun, you know, enjoy it. It's yeah. part of the process. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on. I'm going to make some announcements. So everybody give a thumbs up to Sherry. Sherry, what's your website? Uh, SherryChristensen.com. Okay. I happen to have it here. All right. Thank you. All right. SherryChristensen.com. So if you go to the website, you can see all kinds of things that Sherry's done. And uh, also, where do we get your video? Um, Lilydale. <laughs> Lily, lilyartvideo.com. I don't have that up. I should, but Lily. You know There's a link on my website. Perfect. Go to Sherry Christensen. Yeah, that's perfect. Cause you've got, you have like four or five out. Yeah. I have uh, five now, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we keep producing them cause everybody wants them. Great. It's wonderful. I enjoy yeah. it. 